Hello everyone and welcome. As many of you know, fuel economy and emission regulations are always getting more and more stringent, making it more difficult to keep vehicles like this 2016 5 liter V8 Mustang GT alive. With clever technology, however, there are ways of improving the Mustang's low end efficiency without sacrificing much top end power. The idea is to keep the engine as fuel efficient as possible at lower RPM and light throttle applications, but transform it into a raw muscle car when you're flat out. On the Mustang, one of the pieces of technology working towards this goal is the charge motion control valve. Now like any other gasoline engine, the air enters through the air filter, passes along through the throttle body, enters the intake manifold where it's then split between the eight cylinders, and then it runs into the charge motion control valve. So how does this system work? Well, Ford actually filed to patent this device back in 1999, and so that's kind of where this information here is coming from. And so as mentioned, what you've got, you've got your V8 engine, of course, uh, for this example, it could be used for any style engine, doesn't have to be a V8. Um, you've got your intake, the air comes in, passes through the throttle body in the intake manifold, and that's where it runs into this charge motion control valve. And so that's what we've got drawn in red right here. And as you can see, there are valves in each one of these ports where the air is going to flow through. And so these will all rotate together and at lower RPM, these valves will pretty much be closed. So you're restricting the airflow uh, and at low loads and then at high RPM and high loads, uh, you'll open that so it's pretty much just wide open, just like a uh, wide open throttle valve. And so what that looks like here, where we've got the intake uh, all the way coming to the intake valve, you've got your charge motion control valve, after which you'll have your fuel injector spraying in the fuel to mix with the air, and then it'll go inside the combustion chamber. And so looking at just the two intake valves here, so we're gonna have two intakes, of course, uh, for a four valve cylinder, and here we have an opening. And so as you can see, uh, this valve will open and close depending on what RPM you're at, what throttle uh, position you're at. And so as you close this fully, you can see there's just a small opening there. So most of that air is going to flow into this intake valve rather than both of them. Now, of course, some air will go through both of them and they will both open, uh, but most of the air will flow through here and you're also restricting that airflow significantly so not much air can pass and you're really gonna speed up that airflow there because you're channeling it into a much smaller uh, area. So what this is doing, you're getting higher velocity air, you're sending most of that into one valve, um, and so you want to position the charge motion control valve as close as possible uh, to the intake valves. Now obviously there's going to be packaging restrictions which force you to bring that back up, but you want it as close as possible uh, for maximum efficiency. And so what this does is it creates this swirl and tumble of the air and fuel. Um, and so that's gonna give a better mixture. So moving into the advantages, you know, that better mixture of air and fuel uh, at these lower RPMs, it's gonna give you better fuel economy. It's gonna give you better idle uh, stability. And it's also going to lower emissions. So at lower RPMs, you know, these are things that it doesn't, it's okay to sacrifice power because you're not really giving it uh, full throttle. Disadvantage, however, Moving into when you do get on full throttle, you're still gonna have this, you know, and even though it's gonna be wide open and not much restriction, there is still gonna be a slight restriction there in airflow. Um, you know, not a huge deal. Obviously, Ford has compensated for it. Uh, the engine's plenty powerful, 435 horsepower, I believe, uh, out of that five liter V8 engine. Um, and of course, you're always going to be adding cost and complexity when you're adding devices like this. So it's a cool way, you know, of allowing a vehicle to have, you know, a decently efficient uh, running engine at the lower RPMs and lower engine loads. Uh, but still be able to produce plenty of power when you need it and still have, you know, that characteristic 5 liter V8 engine, which the Mustang is known for. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below.